KCGM TV presents, in association with the Night Scout Foundation, Are We There Yet? in T1 Tech. Tonight our guest is Jason Calabrese. Jason has been with us from the beginning and has managed a very large portion of the Night Scout project from its inception. Now with Open APS, Jason has continued his work on refining the process of dealing with T1D from the cutting edge of the We Are Not Waiting community. So please welcome, live from San Diego, California, Jason Calabrese. Tonight's guest is world-renowned master programmer Jason Calabrese. And as I was doing up the questions to talk with Jason, I realized that he is one of those people that resides in my mind and in my heart. And so it was kind of tough doing the questions because this man has altered the life of my child. And that has been something very significant for our family. So we're now open camera. Jason, good evening. How are you doing in San Diego? Doing good. All righty. If anybody wants to type in, if they can hear fine, do the sound check. So why don't we begin with who is Jason Calabrese? Who's your family? And then your professional career. Yeah, so um, I've been doing all the stuff for my for my son Andrew. I, um, he's a twin. Uh, his twin sister is Katie. Um, they're both they're both nine and getting ready to go into fourth grade. And you know he's he's had type one um, for six years now. It was just his sixth sixth anniversary. Oh wow. That's right. He was within a year of our son's diagnosis. Yeah. So we actually, when we first started, we actually used the old Dexcom, you know, the old oval Dexcom for a little bit. Oh, really? Before we, before we replaced that. So, so you used the oval. So that's pre seven. That was yeah. That was the. I forget what it was called. It was it was the, it was the, it was before the. I forget, uh, I forget the names, but it was like that. It was the oval one. <laughs> wow. So, Heidi, can you hear us on CGM in the cloud? If you can, just type in. All righty. So now, so you're married to Heidi, and she is one of the um, uh, fierce warrior mothers. She does all kinds of stuff in the San Diego area. JDRF, and she also does admining for certain groups. Yeah, she had she started a Facebook group in San Diego, the um, SDT1D, and she was doing that, you know, way before any of the Night Scout stuff got going. Um, I used to always give her a hard time for you know spending so much time on Facebook and always <laughs> made fun of Facebook and said I, I'll never have a Facebook account, and and then <laughs> and then things got go, going with Night Scout, and and then I started spending a bunch of time on Facebook. So. Yeah, that's interesting. My wife had been in the uh, diabetes online community for like six years prior to the, you know, me making a Facebook account and, and doing it. And I'd say, hey, do you know this person? And she'd be like, yeah, we're good friends for about six years now. <laughs> I'm glad you finally <laughs> met them. <laughs> so I don't think I've met anybody that she didn't know. All righty. So now what do you do professionally? Um, so I'm a software developer, uh, I've, you know, worked for several, um, usually web-based, um, and I did, you know, Java stuff for a while, I'm doing, um, Node and Coffee Spring now, um, a lot, a lot of actual is tools that we use in Night Scout, there's a, a, a nice overlap there, um, you know, I use the, the same computer with the same tools that I use for work, so it's, it's good and bad, you know, it's, it's sometimes easy to get distracted. Working from home? Well, working from home, but also you know, just using all the same stuff, you know. So with it, within the oh, same okay. ID, I have, you know, Night Scout open, but I also have my work stuff open. And, you know, I have to like, force myself not to switch over to the Night Scout tab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, working from home can be, um, I find the times I telecommunicate 
it's it's amazing it's wonderful and the other side of the sword is just as many problems as i guess it, ultimately i like working in my sweatpants <laughs> it's, it's you know good time you know time efficient time wise and yeah the team i work with is all all remote you know we're kind of spread out of course you know from san diego to new york and amsterdam so it, it works out pretty well you know because you know we, we basically all work remotely and then we get back together every few few months yeah, and plus you don't have the commute time. That's that's what I liked. You got the, the hours of the commute time back in your life. Exactly. So how did you discover Night Scout, and what were you doing just prior to that? Because you had mentioned to me once that you wanted to solve the triple question mark. You wanted that to alarm. Yeah, so I, mean, I guess like the way I found is I was at a conference, and I, I didn't really use Twitter much at the time. But I just decided, I just tweeted one one little thing, and then John replied to that, and I hadn't I hadn't seen anything that he was doing before then. Um, and there was some you know some Twitter chat with that, and then I met Toby and a bunch of other people, and found out about Tide Pool was still was already kind of getting started a, a little bit then. Um, and there was a a Tide Pool meetup um, that I signed up for, and then I you know right after that I got a message from Brandon. And you know, chatted with him some, and I think it was actually Brandon that sent me the link to Night Scout right after Lane and Morse um, published that. But before Night Scout even got going, I had a little um, a little web app that I was working you know, with a, a copy of, of the uploader um, that it was called Project Blue at the time. Um, and some of Rajat's, I think, early installs were actually using Project Blue, so they actually had two servers running well, all those original sites where they had. You know, Night Scout running plus Project Glue, and the uploader was pointing to Project Glue, and they were both kind of using the same database. Uh huh. And then we kind of merged in the API piece of that into Night Scout, and it kind of went from like prototype to you know real project. Now, you know that was that early period. Now Rajat was working with Rajat was working with your version of Night Scout. It was the color version, right? Yeah, so when I first started look, looking at Night Scout, it was all gray. And I didn't know any of the design reasons behind, you know, why it was all gray. And I found out all that out later, you know, Lane had you know, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of theoretical work behind that, you know, for right. work with control centers and things. But I, I didn't know any of that, so I was like, why is this all gray? And, <laughs> you know, I, I it was just kind of quick and dirty thing, and I just didn't spend the time to put colors in. So. I added colors, and originally, I only wanted Night Scout for nighttime, you know, to fix those triple question marks, because that was kind of like a, the hole in the system. You know, we had a baby monitor going, right. so you know, I, I would wake up to any alarms, you know, and you know, take care of what, whatever was going on. But if it, if it went to question marks, the whole system was broken. There was no alarms. You know, anything could be happening. So that was like that. I, I felt like I had to fix that that hole in the system. So. I got that working at nighttime, and I, I had the whole screen. With, it was all black with red text because I wanted it to, you know, for night vision and everything. I thought that would be kind of neat, you know, just to make it, you know. So it was all red, and then and blue. And then when I went to, to Night Sky, I started doing all red, and I went to some colors. Um, you see, like some old screenshots with like the old green before we went to the the new green that John found. That's, yeah, the triple question marks is, was the most annoying thing for us also. And, it, you know, it's still a problem. They still haven't fixed it. They, you know, even, even today, I think share will alarm for missed data, but it won't alarm for question marks. No, it, it, it is, you it can now set the, the share will, if you set 30 minutes on the G4 for no data, but like 30 minutes, a lot can happen. It's right. it was cut down to fifteen minutes for the G five, but I'm always looking at it like, where's my ten minutes? You know, give me a five minute. If, if I'm losing connection, I want to know. Yeah, yeah. So so fixing the question marks was the big thing, and then yeah, that kind of led to you know really wanting more data. I had, had I had seen some stuff from John and Adrian about about that, and you know I just like I felt like that that was kind of that was going to be. The next thing that I had to have. So you know, once we had, once you start having the raw data, you kind of 
kind of get a feel for the data, kind of at a different level than you get from you know the filtered, smoothed data that you, that you normally see. Right. So after April, April twenty seventh, Jason Adams throws the switch. We we get the group, and April twenty eighth, you Ben creates the Night Scout project. You and Ben are basically managing that, and then that kind of you were kind of like front and center managing the project. What were the early days like for you, especially when our growth just started going nuts? I mean, nuts. I mean, there were there were a few months where you know there was like the Rajat version and the community version, and then I still had my version, and there weren't the, the some of the features that I was depending on weren't in weren't in the community version yet. Yeah, so we, so I had to basically I had to move a bunch of stuff in there and it was it was it was the same for the uploader. So I had made a bunch of little tiny tiny little changes, you know, from debugging things, trying to make it a little bit more reliable or fix one little thing. But then there then then you know Ross had his had his version and they were all copy and paste of so John's version. But they were all you know slightly different. You know, people fix things slightly differently or right. It's a little formatting thing, so just trying to actually like, pull all that together and line it up was kind of tricky. So there, there was kind of a long period there where I wasn't in sync and nobody was in sync. And it became, you know, kind of really difficult to help people because I wasn't running the same thing that anybody else was running. You know, so that's why I, I, right now I, I really don't like running anything that, that other people aren't using. I, 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 you know, I like trying to stay stay current, you know, with, with Open APS. With you know, the, I treat the you know the Night Scout Dev branch kind of as my production branch. Uh -huh. you know, that, that, that's what you know what I, what I'm running with, pretty much no changes. Um, you know, just running that straight. There's, you know, it's all very configurable, so everybody has a different system. But you know, having a to me, you know, there's open source and then there's an open project. You know, you could have open source and just have a code dump. Mm -hmm. But you know, what I really wanted to work on and what I really wanted to use was an open project. You know, I don't want to be, I don't like working alone. I'd rather, you know, work with other people on something and kind of. Sure. You know, it's kind of frustrating sometimes because everybody wants things a little differently, or they think they want things a little differently. You, like, you know, there's a lot of discovery that goes on. You know, as you're building this, you know, and, and adding things and. Um, so some things took a long time, you know. Ben had a lot of really strong ideas about things, and you know, a lot of people did. You know, so there was a, a lot of a lot of back and forth and trying things. So like, the you know, the actual quantity of code might not be a lot sometimes, but mm -hmm. the thought and the discussion that goes into making it that way and getting people and having you know, kind of coming to some, some consensus takes takes a long time. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember we used your version. Um, for just the longest time, even when we would, even when, when, when oops, even when we would uh, update to the community version, we were still running. One of the rigs was still running your original version, and, and I didn't know about the colors either. And so I liked that version a lot. And then when I found out the reasoning behind it, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but up until. We probably ran your original version for like 18 months. It just it just never died. It was always stable. So I, I'm, I'm sure there's people still running it. I got a question the, the other like I guess it was last week. Um, we were asking about some stats on the old uploader, the you know the old you know wired uploader. So I, was, I went into the into the Google Analytics for that, and there's still like a thousand active users. Really? Of, of the wired uploader, you know, you, you it's just you know like when something works, I think people you know you just keep using it until until it doesn't work. No, that's real because we still have at the bottom of his backpack, we still have the wired uploader, even though we work with the wireless and the X strip and all these other things, we still have the wired because I look at it like wireless is wireless and subject to interference it's kind of like an ethernet cable versus your wi-fi your exactly your strongest signals coming over a cabled system and it's faster too like you know, I, oh, yeah. I remember when i was when kevin was working on you know the, the new uploader that, that actually never never got released or finished 
that there was a lot of debugging there where it's just you know trying to pull all the same data that we pulled over USB, doing all that over over BLE was just really slow. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, things that were instant before become slow. <laughs> so the first version we had of Night Scout was Cookie Monster because we never named the alpha version. Years later, my wife around the house would always call it apple pie, so that's what we call it, but it never had a... We talked about the, that, it, you know, probably on Gitter, you know, call, calling, you know, brownie and apple pie. I think we, we kind of named both of those kind of after the fact. Yeah, now, can you, do you remember every revision letter? Yeah. Five seconds. <laughs> yeah, so, um, after Cookie Monster is Dreamsicle. And then after that is ench um, Enchilada and Funnel Cake. Yeah, we had the most fun with Enchilada and Funnel Cake. Yeah, Funnel Cake was fun. We had the contest. Um, I still need to get grilled cheese out. There's a lot. Is that I think the thing that's kind of holding holding things up on that is everybody that's working on Night Scout now is also using Open APS. Or, or, or some form of, of open APS or some kind of loop. So there's so and we what, what we're using is so different than the basic use case. Right. We're, we're also seeing problems that I don't think other people will see. So I, I have we have some performance problems, but, but those performance problems are because we have like you know 50 times more data than you would normally have. So with open APS, we're uploading device status every loop. You know, so every five minutes or every three minutes or however often you're looping, we upload this device status. And all that goes to Night Scout. Um, and you can kind of think of those as a bunch of uploaded battery entries, but it's with tons of data, with basically all, the whole state of your loop at that time, every, every five minutes. And then if you start having multiple rigs going, then you have four of those going. Or, and it just becomes this you know, massive amount of data, and we let, and we we use a lot of it, so you can scroll back. You could, you know, scroll back in Night Scout and go back a few hours and see exactly what the loop did at that point. Well, that's a lot of information. So it's 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 a crazy amount of information. It's it's amazing that it works, but you know, on, on a phone, it's it's kind of too much. So we really need to get some kind of smart paging system in place. But but things like that are kind of. Uh, hard to do because, you know, especially for me, it's like everything I do, I have to be able to break down into about two hours. That's okay. probably the longest break I'm ever going to get to work on anything. <laughs> Uninterrupted. Yeah, it's funny. It's It actually got a lot worse with Open APS. It's now that, you know, nighttime is, you know, maybe not always perfect, Right. but I, I, I assume it's going to be okay. You know, kind of after I get things stable from di after dinner. I assume it's going to be stable throughout the night. So, to stay up all night is just you know, and and you know, seven hours last night. Nice. Yeah, upside down. But yeah, so I mean, that's it's like it's it's become almost like a decision. Like, am I going to sleep tonight or not? Right. It's you know, I mean, there's still things that go wrong. You know, sure. You can still, you know, you can still roll over on the sensor and yeah, you know, yeah. Diabetes yeah. is still diabetes, it's but still diabetes, you know, a pizza could kick in a lot later than you expected. Um, there could be a bug. You know, we, we've had we've had bugs in Open APS that you know are. We got a new neighbor next door, and somehow they brought some kind of new radio interference with them. And you know, for for a few nights, everything was broken. Yeah, we actually have a uh, arms race with Wi-Fi in our neighborhood. Somebody <laughs> upgrades to something and it bleeds over onto your signal, causing your system to yeah. perpetually retry. So then you have to go out and buy a bigger system. I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, that's I'm, what I've done that before. Yeah, I'm actually. Thinking, now, like to make sure that I have you know steady coverage at night. Right. I actually have three rigs going around his bed. Oh really? And the, and um, I've actually got set up with some stuff that Scott and Oscar and Pete and everybody have tuned to where it listens for each, each of the rigs list basically listens for other other pump communication uh -huh. and waits so they, they, they kind of they, it's not perfect but they, they they cooperate a little bit now so wow. they don't constantly step on each other where before it was they would step on each other but they were trying so hard it was like they were just like basically 
I picture like a bunch of hammers just hitting the pump. You know, they're they're just you know <laughs> fighting over the pump and would normally get something would get through, but it was kind of sloppy. Where that right now it's you know it's much cleaner. Nice. So when I was down in San Diego and we were talking at that point, you told me you weren't yet ready to do the open APS thing. So take us from that day in San Diego, that sunny day in San Diego, to when you're like, Heidi, let's do this. Or was it Heidi saying, Jason, get this going? <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was a few things that happened. Uh, one of the big ones was Milos did a ton of work and got the temp basal visualization working. Um, and, and it wasn't ne necessarily for open APS at the time, uh -huh. but one, okay, now that was, that was like one of the pieces. Like I didn't want to use open APS until I could really monitor it and really see what it was doing. Right. You know, I think I think you know for an adult using open APS and having the having the pump with them and, and having you know being able to see what's happening on the pump might have been enough, especially mm -hmm. you know at the beginning when you were you know kind of building and debugging the system. Right. But you know to have it running remotely, even if it's just you know across the house. I really felt like I, I had to be able to see what was happening with it. So, I, so Milo's got the temp basal visualization going, and then uh, for a long time, Ben wasn't actually even using the system for himself yet. You know, he he he, he had built all the pieces that everybody was using, that everybody was depending on, but he wasn't using it yet. And it was like that's kind of like okay, you you've got to start using this, you know, and, and and get it working for yourself, and you know. And then, then, and uh, I wasn't necessarily waiting on it, but I was ho hoping that he would do it first because I knew that, I knew there were a bunch of little glitches and stuff. But once he, once he got into it and started using it, uh -huh. he, they were working on those. Um, so I think it kind of it was after that CWD um, in Anaheim last year. Yes, because he still wasn't there, using Ollie, it. Ollie, um, right? And you and James, and we, we, you know, it was like it was like we did the, you know a day in the loop, and it was kind of like a joke because. I did, we weren't. I wasn't using a loop yet, you know. And Ali was, you know, I guess already a little while into it. But it was, it was the monitoring was kind of crude at that point. I think we showed a picture of from from one of Ali's screenshots. Yes. That had, uh, yeah. It was like every every temp basal became a dot, and it was just like this whole screen of gray dots. <laughs> so it's like okay, it's doing something, but we don't know what it's doing. That was actually a good presentation. It's one of those ones I've got on video that I have to edit. But Ben is watching in, uh, in CGM in the cloud and says basal visualization was huge. So, yeah, he's supporting what it, you're it saying. It happened about the same time. It was like the time when, you know, Ben, ben started working on it, getting, getting the upload from OpenAPS to, to Night Scout working. There were a bunch of little subtle details there that it, it, really, it really took some... I guess you know it, it, it's a lot of concentration to get that right. You know, you get that. You know, it, it, once you're using it, it seems simple because um, it's just a bunch of shell scripts moving some data around and doing some stuff. But getting it actually working right with the different data handling and different systems and all those little details uh, took some work. So Ben did that pretty much right after Milos did the temp basal visualization, and then it's like I had to have it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I had already got had had a pump and I was and had sent a temp basal to it, so I knew I could do it. Right. But I didn't feel like a system that I could use yet. But once I saw that, it's like I can use this. Yeah, because uh, when I came home, my wife was asking me about Open APS and your thoughts on it, and I was like, not yet, not yet. And then when you went into it, she's like, hey. <laughs> Jason's doing it. We need to look into this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was that drive back from CWD that I was like, you know, ordering a bunch of stuff from Amazon, and I was like, I, I'm I'm going to do it now. I've got to get got to get it going. Now, you have you've built the Open APS on the Raspberry Pi. You've built it on the Edison. How many do you have? Which ones do you have it built on? Which do you think is the easiest to start doing it? And which one do you like the best? Yeah, so the the, the doing it on the Raspberry Pi is by far the easiest. Okay. So and and, and I, I still use use a Pi for in some cases. So I, I think for anybody getting started, it probably makes sense to start with a Pi. 
Okay. They're cheap. They're they're pretty forgiving. Um, they it's easy to make backups of of it once you get it working, and kind of clone that setup and use it for, for others. And then later later on, you know, if you moved on to an Edison, the the Raspberry Pi becomes a really great you know bedside rig. Oh, okay, so the the little larger one is a good home one. It's now, a good home one, but it's also it's like I, I took I still I took it with me on vacation, you know, as a backup because just like you were saying with USB feeling kind of m more reliable, it's the same. I, I can actually plug the Dexcom receiver directly into the Raspberry Pi. Okay. So it's, you're completely you could be completely offline. Everything's plugged in except you know the pump's not plugged in, but. You know, it's just, it just—it just feels a little bit more reliable, a little bit less, you know, some some, some less failure points. Um, okay, and then he's still on the G4, right? Yeah, yes, we're, we're using the G4 Share. The, the most recent change that I've made um, was we we were we were using Xtrip for for a while, um, after, you know, after after moving away from USB, and it was working great. There, I really didn't have any complaints about it. You know, it was it was right. stable. There weren't really any features I wanted. I never really went into the Xtrip app. It just worked, and it was, it was great. And there was an update waiting on the phone, an OTA update. Oh no! I, I had been carefully Don't ignoring. Don't press it. that button, Jason. <laughs> and I, I had been carefully ignoring it, you know, for for over a month. You know, <laughs> uh, really needed to get out. And it, it, it would always make you, you know, schedule the time that exactly. you, you want to remind. You. So every night, every day, I would have it remind me again at 9 p.m. and I would make sure I cleared it. But I was, you know, I was always worried that Andrew would click on it, or Heidi, or somebody right. in school, you know, would, would click on that. Um, but luckily, that didn't happen then. But then I was getting ready to go out of town for for work, and it was going to be summer vacation, and the times. I, I, I just knew that the second I got on the plane, somebody was going to press up the update button. It was just, there was just no, yeah. it was going to happen. So I did did some research and talked to some people, and it seemed like. Xtrip would would con, would continue working with Marshmallow, and you know some people had it working with Marshmallow. I, th I said, I'm just. It, it was Saturday. It was you know I think it was Friday night. I was going to be leaving Monday morning, so I have the whole weekend if something goes wrong. Right. I'm just going to do it. So Friday night I upgraded, and it was done and it worked. Nice. I was like, wow, I, I, I'm lucky. I, I, I lucked out. I, I thought that was a huge problem. Dodged a bullet. But then Saturday morning. Um, that one receiver, um, it was it was going to hit the seven day limit, so I had the second one already going because I, I swapped receivers, you know, to make sure that there's no downtime. Right. So I was just going to swap receivers next trip. So I would just you know forget one and, and pair to the other, and it wouldn't pair. Oh no! And just wouldn't pair. And I tried everything. I tried you know different versions of Xtrip. I tried Xtrip Plus. I tried John's G5 build. I tried just. Everything I can think of, um, yeah, yeah, and nothing was working with it. I, I completely did a factory reset of the phone, and it just doesn't work. So uh, about halfway through the day on Saturday, I was like, "That's it, I'm done with depending on Android, XDrip, and all of this." And I went back and I, I said, "I'm just going to do it all from Edison." I had already been testing um, Ben's OpenX Share VLE, kind of a mouthful to say. Um, but it wasn't really reliable enough for me. You know, it worked, mm -hmm. but, but and I had, I had actually been sending Andrew to school with two rigs for a while, just while I was testing it, but it, it wasn't ready to switch to, but it became like basically my only choice. So I spent, you know, basically round the clock um, from like middle of the day Saturday through Sunday night, just trying to get that thing as reliable as I could. And, you know, we were at, um, JDRF event on Sunday, at, at, you know, at, 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 and I was just sitting in the corner, you know, Wi-Fi. <laughs> it is great work. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of things trying to get the timing right, and you know, it would it would fail, and it was just all kinds of little things. Um, and then actually, while I was in New York, I did a ton of remote debugging, which oh, really? which actually kind of proved the value of of, of running from Edison. So when it was running on Android, you had to actually have somebody there, you know, looking at it, pushing buttons on the phone to do anything. Right. 
But with the Edison, I have an SSH tunnel set up. So I could connect to the Edison from anywhere. And I'm actually be on there, on the shell, and I could, you know, run commands and install stuff and configure things. So I remember like well, there was one night there where I was sitting on this at this rooftop bar, you know, with some some of the guys I work with, deep debugging on my phone, you know, the, the Edison and chatting with Ben and and you know and you know having a beer. <laughs> That's yeah. That, that works. Mm -hmm. We had been avoiding an uptake for three or four weeks, and we were coming back from the endo, coming down the mountain because we're like three hours away to our endo, Newport Beach, and so we were coming down the mountain, and she was my wife was swapping out the Moto G's, and all of a sudden she goes, uh oh, <laughs> and I'm like, what happened? She goes, I clicked on the update, <laughs> but it was seem that update was seamless. It didn't affect us, but. I did brick the uploader once at 6 a.m. prior to school on a Monday, and the look on my wife's eyes told me I could never do that again. <laughs> so I do updates like Friday yeah, night. Yeah, I went. It didn't work. <laughs> okay, we can't. He can't go to school today. Yeah, so, you, you know. know. We, we, did it, we did it before. It'll be okay, but I. I you know, you don't like to think that you're dependent on it, but you really do become dependent on it. Well, it's, you know, it's like you can close your eyes and drive. I don't recommend it. So now you yeah, have... And, and it works out. So now you have the open APS, you're doing that, and where do you take it? You started doing, like, more miniaturization, right? Doing the Edison, trying yeah. to get it smaller. This is... This is this is one of the Edison's here. Oh, now is that a full is, full system? Yeah, this is the whole thing. That's the whole thing. All yeah, right. So this is everybody take a look is, at that. That's everything. This is in the E3. So I have I have actually four Edison's. So this is number three. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a bunch of tape in the middle where I just have some padding around a battery. Uh huh. And the back, and the back is a Riley link. And I mean, the story of these Riley links is pretty amazing too. I mean, the, all the work that Pete put into this is just amazing. All the work that you know Toby put put in to get get this order in. This was like the original order. Where I think there were actually forty of these were made, which I mean, it's just incredible. We basically, I mean, it's basically like open, completely open hardware. If we're talking to the pump, it was designed and then produced, and we, I think that, you know this the third batch is being prepared now. Wow. Just, I, that's I so much smaller than the original actually, rig. It's, yeah. That's so much smaller than the original rig, and it's not too. What do you What do you think? That's a couple of Tic Tac boxes. Two and a half Tic Tac boxes. boxes. It's a little heavier, but and I mean, like, the battery does make me nervous because it's you know a lipo battery, and you know if it was punctured, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be be good. Maybe like a blowtorch. Now, if you had a par, can you hook a parakeet into that? Well, the I mean, some people actually have done that. So there's, it's it's called a UART, which is like basically like a serial connection. So we're, right. right now we're using one UART to connect to the Riley link or to a TI stick, mm -hmm. and the other UART is actually done for the serial like a second. USB into here and plug that into the computer and be able to basically get a, a, a console cable, you know, into it. But you can disable that and then hook a Wixel up to that as an also. And a couple of people have done it. Um, it's not, it hasn't really been documented in a way that, you know, it's been replicated much, but a couple of people have done it, so it's definitely possible. But then you would have a Wixel on here. But what I'm using with um, OpenX share, share BLE is I'm using the Bluetooth on Edison. So, you know, the Edison has built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. So, like, if you get if you get a Pi, if you want Bluetooth, that's a dongle. If you want if you want Wi-Fi, that's another dongle. Especially uh, with the okay. Pi two, with the Pi, those are built in. But there's there's some issues with it where you, sometimes you end up having to disable the Bluetooth and you know with the Pi three. But you know, with with the Edison, it's all built in. So there's I mean there's the setup with Edison is harder because you actually have to flash it. 
and the flashing, you know, the first 20 times you do it, it will fail. And then it will work once, and then you won't, won't be able to reproduce it again for 10 times. And then you'll figure out what you did, and it's, and it's simple. But <laughs> Wow. So how long did you do lo closed looping just at night and open looping at school? Um, I guess we started November, kind of around, around Thanksgiving last year. And we were just running at night, so we would run, we would, he would use the Medtronic pump at night, and then to school we would switch to the Animus pump. So we were using the same pump site, but, but a lot of, we found out that a lot of the clips on the pump sites are compatible. So even though the, the connection to the reservoir is totally different, um, so you can't use the same tube, the actual clip onto the, onto the infusion set was compatible, so we were able to switch pumps. So we would have we would have the Medtronic pump going at night, and he'd get ready for school, and we would take that pump off and put the Animus pump on. And when he came home from school, I'd switch him out again. Musical pumps. Yeah, and we, we did we did that for a couple months. Um, I guess we we might the school system wanted wanted actual wanted it actually in the doctor's orders. So they, 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 want, they, they said, yeah, it's fine that you're using it, and we get that it's off-label, but we want it in the doctor's orders. You know, and I had been talking to the doctor about it and showing them pieces. I, I showed him the Riley links when I got those, you know, months before I actually used them. I brought them into the office. And, you know, the, the reaction was kind of like, well, why aren't you doing it yet? Which was, you know, a, a little strange, but it still took a while for me to get it going. Um, but I think you know, actually signing it and actually having it written out, you know, maybe made the doctor a little a little nervous. <laughs> I'm putting my name on what? <laughs> yeah. And then it, it became it was on it's, it's listed as required equipment. So I have Night Scout and Open APS listed as required equipment. Touchdown. It's a uh, you know, right now everybody would need to work with, but you know, if people change and they become difficult, at least I, I have that. Nice. So we, we did that coming back after um, winter break last year. So when he went back to school, we, we, we basically went back, you know, I think like a week after that, with sending open APS to school. And, you know, it, 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 at first, you know, there's, there are little hiccups, you know, just like, you know, the first time, just like some nice stuff, you know, things stop working and you find somebody there locally that could reboot something for you. and at one point where you had nurses, you know, just pulling USB cables out of the pie and plugging them back in again and trying to make it work. And <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with the pie, each time you do that, you miss corrupting the file system. And, oh, no. Um, you, that was fun. You have a really nice school nurse in administration. I'm trying yeah, to imagine have, this at our school, and it's like, mm, no, not yet. Yeah, we have, we have, there's a few nurses that are kind of share between different schools, and they come and do the boluses. Um, and then we, there's a, the health tech, and she's great. She, you know, she has nice scout up in her. And if there's an alarm, she deals with it, and then and then she would go and enter it into the care portal. So it's like it was like a lot of times I would see him dropping, I see him dropping. You know, this is even before when ABS, and then I'd see oh, 15 carbs. Like oh, he got the juice box, you know, and I didn't, and I didn't say anything. And then with open APS, that's it kind of. When everything was working smoothly, it was a little bit easier for them because they would just use the pump, you know, kind of as normal. They would do the, they would go through the bolus wizard and enter the carbs, enter the bolus, and go. And then Open APS would upload all that, so then I would get the notifications right away, so they didn't have to do the double entry anymore. Nice. Um, but there are still times where I would need extra communication with them because you know, if if he was going high, then Open APS would be working pretty hard. I'm um, bringing him back down, and then you're going into a snack and have IOV that you wouldn't actually know about, that the pump doesn't know about. Uh, gotcha. So, so, so we did we did a, we did a couple of tricks around that. So what I what I landed up doing is on the pump itself, I set the high target actually pretty high. I set it to like 160 for the, for the high target, and then I have the low target set to the 115 that I want for open ABS. Right. And I set open APS to ignore that 160 and only use the 115. So then when somebody goes to do a bolus wizard, they're not really doing much of a correction. 
Oh. They're, not, they're not trying to correct them all the way down to 115. They're only trying to correct them down to 160. So that kind of gave me a little bit, a, a little bit of, of room in there, since they didn't know anything about, you know, net IOB. You know, right. Most people don't know anything about net IOB. Correct. The pump doesn't know anything about it. The pump just, you know, it just knows what you bolus. It doesn't know that you've increased temp, the, you know, how much extra insulin you've gotten from the temp. So, right. and that helped a lot. You know, it kind of that was actually Scott's idea, um, but kind of that combined with the advanced meal assist worked out really, really well towards the end of the school year. So now is Andrew nine now, or is he still, or is he still He's eight? Not. Okay, so one of the you know, great interest that I have in regards to this is our children are the same age. And you're one of the few people talking, especially right now, about your child on Open APS. And uh, Andrew has a question. He says, is there a reason you chose the Edison versus the Pi Zero? Well, I, I have a couple of Pi Zeros. Yeah, here's one. Um, the, the, one of the issues was the, the Pi Zero needs this. The Bluetooth. Well, that, that's for Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Um, and this was the ERF. Um, what is the Oscar's idea? Oscar really wanted the ERF to work. He bought a bunch of them and programmed them and sent them out to people. Um, but then they stopped stopped producing them. Now, what is the cost difference between a Pi Zero and a uh, Edison? Uh, I mean, the Pi Zero is five dollars. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 I mean, but the, but the Edison is, I mean, it's $55, like, at, at fries. Uh, okay. You know, so it's not That's not bad. That, um, but you have a lot more cost effective. So the school, you have in writing from the doctor that you can use it. The school's working with you. They're even doing troubleshooting. So you're in a great uh, position to be the pioneer in this because you actually have people working with you. Yeah. Right. Who's it? Somebody just came, walked in. Now, is this Andrew? Yeah. Come on in, Andrew. Okay. And then he just ran off again. <laughs> I guess we'll come back. <laughs> yeah. the, the lights are on now. Doesn't want to be on TV. Okay, so... So That's now... Here he is again. Come on. Andrew, hey. all right, say hey to C. Jim and the Cloud Group. Well, it's growing every day. All right. Yeah. You want to shoot, do you have, you have India in your pocket? Yeah. Why don't you get India out? Yeah. Talk to this. Yeah. So you can check, you can put that up here in front of, in front of the screen so people can see. So this, this is the one that we, Yeah, and then you know, so then we have inside of here we have the Edison, and that's a crush proof case to a large extent, right? It's it's a little flexible, but mostly mostly crush proof. Nice. Um, yeah, so he just keeps this. You know, at school this was in his backpack. Uh -huh. But but now at home he's been keeping it in his pocket more. Just so the connectivity is. Yeah, and and because it, it's it, you know it's communicating with both the pump. And with the Dexcom, right. so it's, it's doing it's doing both. So it, 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 as long as he has this and the pump and the receiver close by, you know, he's pretty, he doesn't actually even need network. It's all it's all you know. It, it will upload to the network if it's available. But if the network's not available, it will keep going. Nice. Yeah, wow. well, that was one of the one of the really nice benefits of using of using the Bluetooth there. One of the things we never hear about is we never hear about the struggles from the major manufacturers on their open a on their APS projects, but they are running into the very same things that that the developers on open APS are running. I heard uh, one of the people from an op uh, from an APS uh, company talking about a, a period of time where their app crashed every five minutes. So <laughs> you know and. That scared me because I was thinking, wait a minute. But then when you think about it, you're like, that's just normal. That's the development process. Yeah, I mean, the, the way these systems respond kind of in that failure case is pretty important because we're going to run into it. Right. We're, we're going to break it. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, it's like what what happens when it breaks and what does it look like when it breaks is, you know, is pretty, it's pretty important, you know. What does Chris's statement, break, often break faster, What what is that one he you used? Break early, break often. <laughs> break early, break often, right. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like the fail fat, fast, um, which, you know, th there's been some, some disagreements with that, you know. Like, I think like Ben's philosophy is more like if, it, if it's not working right, it should just stop. Right. I've heard Ben right. say that many not, times. You know, so kind of like if it's not working right, just hit it harder and make it work. Now, Ben you know, wants me to ask you how to get one. How to get an open APS system, Ben? Is that the question? Yeah, so, so I guess right now, the, probably the best place, you know, there's the open APS documentation. There's some links to that from openaps.org. But pretty much all the discussion is happening on Gitter. Right. There's the intent to bolus room, which is you know, a little bit of a joke. Ask Andrew. How to get an open APS, Andrew? How do I get an open APS for Derek? Where do I buy want, it? When you want an open APS for Derek, you first of all you should know that you can buy it. You have to make it. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That's so awesome. It's fairly hard to make them at first. When if you didn't know how to make buy them, I mean make them at first, then it would be kind of stressful. You might make a mistake to kind of like buy it but that searching will be useless because you'll have to make it you, the more people that learn how to do it the better that other people can spread awareness and help those people as easy to take one now your dad is really really smart in regards to building those so what would you think if we adopted your dad so he could make us one, and then after we have a whole bunch, then years later we'll we'll let you visit. Is that would that be okay? Uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, nice shirt. Does that say straight out of insulin? Straight, straight out of beta out cells. Of beta cells. Very nice. And I'm going to use my magic powers and say your mother picked that shirt for you. Um, correct. All right. Your mother there are just. Now a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Well, at this point, does anyone in the uh, extended C gym in the cloud group or on the Night Scout Foundation have any questions for Jason or a lot of heart? Just lost signal. No, nope, we're back up on C gym in the cloud. What do you mean hearts? If people like the broadcast, what they see, they will tap hearts, and then they oh. float across the screen. And, it, and I don't want to say Jason doesn't get a lot of hearts, but when you come into the camera, Andrew, all these hearts start pouring in. Okay, more about working together with school and doctors. Ben West would like more about working together with school and doctors, okay. which is... Yes is a significant part for everyone outside of your school district. Yeah, so like the, um, the last couple, I guess for a long time when I, when I go into the doctor, I, I haven't been letting them touch any of our devices. <laughs> you know, the first thing they want to do is, is go download it. Right. But after I broke some, some USB ports myself, I said never again will they touch it. This, I know how easy it is. So, so I, I, ne I never let them touch any of our any of our devices to download anything, so I usually printed out a bunch of a bunch of data. Um, the last time we went in, I think I just printed out one sheet, which is a pie chart of you know just time and range. Uh -huh. and, and like <laughs> there's not not really much you can do for me. So then so then we would just I would you know just kind of I had nice nice got nice running on my computer and just talk about what it's been doing the last two days and kind of scrolling back and forth and and kind of looking at it through Night Scout instead of, you know, through their systems or their reports. Now, Lori Phillips, a very longtime member of CGM in the Cloud, has a question for you, Andrew. She would like to know if you feel better being on OpenAPS. Yes, OpenAPS makes people with type 1 diabetes feel safer because it makes blood, it controls your blood sugar better than you do. Nice. Well, that's a wonderful thing. 
I know I, I know we would like to do that for Derek. Hopefully I can build it without having to adopt your dad. Uh, I'm sure you can build it. I mean, it, it, if, if, you've, if you've been watching Gitter, it, it doesn't take, you know, a developer to, to set up OpenAPS anymore. Um, I'd actually say that doing the ba doing a basic OpenAPS install uh -huh. is kind of a pretty similar level of effort to the original Night Scout setup. Really? The, like the, original, the original Night Scout setup, the first step was root your phone. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. Then, like, I remember and those days. Compile this app. Yeah. And then do all these and, and people did it. Of you course, know? we did it. <laughs> right. We got up to a pretty good sized group. And I, I don't. I think Open APS is easier than that. Really. The, I, the the. It's not. Just, but it's not a. It's not a product. You know. It's a platform. Right. You know, so everybody's system is ends up being different. And you know, and you know, somebody kind of sh shows up and is like, "Okay, well, what do I do to make it work?" This, then somebody says, "Well, what do you want to do? <laughs> Where do you want to go? Yeah, you know, what, what, what do you, what, 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 what devices are you using? Are you using a Dexcom or are you using a Medtronic CGM? Right. You know, Open APS will work with both, but it's very different. You know, are you using a, you know, five twenty two or seven or seven twenty three? You know, those." basically work the same, but if you're using a 512, then some of, some of the reports that we run, you know, using some of the commands on the pump don't exist. So you have to do that differently. Or, you know, are, are you using MMOL? Then there's some extra conversions. Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's the, the entire, the system is different for everybody. So right. somebody seeing what they did for themselves, you know, isn't enough for you. You, you end up having to right. kind of figure out what pieces you have and how to plug it together and and really kind of try it out. I mean, the, for somebody newly coming into OpenAPS, you know, there's, there's some learning curve around just having to use Linux, you know, and having to use a command line. Right. But, you know, it's, it's not hard, it's just different. That's true. I actually know people that have gone in cold to the command line and have been a, have been very successful in regards to that, and anybody with an uh, an Apple product or a Linux product can practice with the uh, command line. Yeah, I mean, I, I have an app on my phone, you know, that I can SSH into the into that into the machine, into the different Edisons and files. I like that. I, I use remotely too, which works great. Yeah, I I really like the idea of remote because the only time we have failures and it could just be a broken port. It could uh, the share cradle broke a port at one time when I was out of town on a conference. So my wife always like braces herself that something's going to happen. But she actually has gotten to the point where her troubleshooting has has uh, fixed problems and. Yeah, I mean that was kind of, yeah, it's like every time I go out of town, there's always like it, there's usually been so many changes since the last time that I think last time I I, I had this kind of ongoing um, presentation that I keep updating for Heidi. Of, of all the different pieces of the system, and like, if you can't get in touch with me, these are all the things you can do. And I think it's like I don't know how many pages now, thirty pages of, of, of slides of all the different pieces and things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's well. I know that uh, if my wife's watching, she's gonna want to uh, move even faster on this. She was actually prior to you folks doing it, she didn't want to consider going back to the Medtronic pump and when you folks did it it was like once Heidi and Jason were doing it it was <laughs> it was back on the table for discussion and I know that it's the hottest topic at the booth for us this week is open APS um, in fact people are bypassing some of the Night Scout questions uh, and going straight to that we're having scientists, we're having doctors, we're having uh, people with doctorates coming in and they're asking about it. And, uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't think you, you don't have to like decide to use OpenAPS. You just decide to stop playing with it. Right. You know, it's not like you're not making some huge commitment and, you know, to, to you know, finding a pump and finding a pie and trying to do some commands. I mean, it, you know, once you manually send a temp basal command to the pump, it becomes kind of addictive. You well, know, you, you can't really you can't really stop at that point because you've seen that it works. You can get to that step 
pretty quickly. Yeah, I have never forgotten Scott's Twitter post of Dana's pump doing that with water when they were testing that out. And you're looking at that, and you're, it's just a huge game changer. It's yeah, just, I mean, like you, you send a command and you see it do something on the pump. And it's like even if you decided that you weren't going to do it anymore, then you at least you know that that pump works, right? And you know how to control it. And you know maybe you decide that you don't, it's not for you, but you know it's, it's kind of like you've at least tested that 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 piece out, and maybe you pass it on to somebody else that, that could use it. We would like to thank our special guest tonight, Jason Calabrese, for his unparalleled contribution to our community and for his continued efforts in blazing a trail for us with OpenAPS. For more information on OpenAPS, please visit openaps.org, where you will find the starting point to a burgeoning community of like-minded individuals that are not waiting for what is next because they are creating what is next. This has been a Night Scout Foundation production. Come change the world with us. Learn more at nightscoutfoundation.org. In association with the Coexist Movement, let your voice be heard while you still have a choice. And in association with CGM in the Cloud, open source, open data, open hearts. Caring for you and your loved ones around the world and around the clock. We now return you to your regularly scheduled life, already in progress.